distinguished delegates uh, this is uh, a privilege for me to share my work on the application of optimization to river systems uh, in this um, gathering so as you see here the my title is optimal water transfer in a system of interconnected rivers for water resources management so this work is basically the application of optimization techniques in managing water resources especially here uh, the system what we have considered that is the uh, interlinking of rivers that means the two rivers are interconnected and there we are trying to manage the water resources so as you see what could be the motivation for such kind of the research as all of you know the, the water plays a crucial role in achieving sustainable development goals and it is basically a major driver for the agricultural economic and socio-economic growth of the region not only in india but you can see the several regions worldwide are facing growing problems of the water scarcity and, and the main reason what you observe that this is primarily happening because of the uneven distribution of the water resources and that is when it is combined with the extreme hydrological uncertainty like heavy rainfall or the droughts and that is what the climate variability poses a great challenge in managing the water resources and, and certainly that poses a question mark whether we will be able to achieve the sustainable development goals or not in the want of the water. So these issues basically warrant to develop and implement new approaches. That should be basically the out of the box. It should be beyond the conventional way of how we are managing the water resources. Because here we have to address the complex problems that is characterize the linkages what we have in between the water, food and the livelihood changes. So, to manage the water resources effectively, especially uh, in the regions where we have somewhere lot of water, plenty of water is available, and somewhere we have the scarcity. So, the interlinking of rivers is being advocated to be capable of solving such kind of the complex problem. And this problem basically poses many challenges because it can involve many disputes the stakeholders may have different viewpoints so we have may have a conflicting conflicting preferences we may have competing water users so the water allocation or water transfer becomes a very very challenging task and that is where we need to evolve a appropriate methodology for managing the water resources in such regions so if you look at uh, some of the uh, literatures or some of the uh, the people what they have done so what do we observe <coughs> sorry the water drives uh, the life food production energy generation healthy ecosystem and economic growth it is basically linked with almost all sustainable goals so if you see the report from the world bank you will observe that the as per this estimate approximately 2 billion people around the world do not have access to the safely managed drinking water resources. So you can think of how acute problem of water scarcity we face around the world. So there is a growing water demand supply mismatch, the population rise, increasing rainfall variability or growing water pollution problems. If they combine all together in several places, that is what is happening and then we are witnessing. And that is what it makes the water as one of the greatest challenge to economic prosperity and sustainable development. The consequences of the, of the water stress may be local, may be natural, may be transboundary, may be regional, or may be at the global level in the today's interconnected and rapidly changing world. And that is where such kind of the, the work requires more attention and that becomes the very important here. If you look at the uh, the water allocation schemes, uh, as per you know the UNESCO, um, they emphasize that this allocation must be based on the principles of efficiency, the sustainability and equity. When you say efficiency, that means 
basically we are trying to see the minimum cost or the maximum benefit when you see the sustainability we speak when we basically say that you must follow the environmental considerations you must have the minimum environmental flow in the rivers so that it maintains the good ecosystem and it's sort of equitable that means the the distribution to the people that should be equal fair share here and that is the reason why if you have to comply on the principle of efficiency sustainability and equity then we need to have very precise or accurate estimation or projection of water demand for different basins and this water demand may be agricultural industrial municipal or environmental flows that is what we say water demand that means we are combining all these components and that becomes very essential for efficient operational management of interconnected river systems the several researchers have used optimization simulation and game models for water allocation you can see these are the the various people who have applied the optimization techniques the present models have been also used in evaluating interbasin water transfer schemes so the interest is increasing so with the increase in the interest in the water resources optimization problems for sustainable development but are still the several methodological questions or the operational questions remain unanswered for the effective op uh, operation of interbasin water transfer so this is the paper here what we are trying to do that to answer some of the questions here which have remain unanswered <coughs> sorry so the objective of this work is primarily here to present an optimization model for optimizing water transfer in a network system of interconnected rivers for improved planning and management of water resources and not only managing water resources to meet the demand but it should also reduce the hydrological hazard primarily the flood we are talking about here the accomplishing the equitable uh, sustainable development goals in the interconnected rivers basins that means we are able to fulfill the agricultural demand drinking water supply demand or industrial demand so municipal demand so and in addition to all these we are also able to maintain the environmental flows in the river system to have the good ecosystem health <coughs> sorry so that is what we have tried in this paper so what we have done that we have formulated a non linear optimization model uh, which is going to help us in the decision making for the operation of interconnected links in the network system of for water transfer the model is basically aimed to minimize the water deficit in the water scarce region and uh, we are going to reduce the flood damages or flood risk in those regions where we have the excess water so we have tried to uh, demonstrate uh, the application of this developed model through a link and that link we will be showing as a case study as an application of this model so what the the methodology consists of that is basically the formulation of a non linear convex optimization model which would help in the decision making as i said so the optimization model is formulated here as a minimization model with the twin objectives the which are complementing to each other with the two different goals for two different regions the first goal is here basically to minimize the water deficit in the water scarce region the other one is we have to minimize the flood risk in water access region <coughs> simultaneously we are going to manage the flood risk in both the basins but we are going to transfer the water from the access to the scarce so we will be able to meet the demand and we will be able to also reduce the flood risk in the basins and the application we are showing through a interconnected river system of koshi mechilning that is known as so koshi is one of the uh, you know the major tributary of river ganga which is well known a big gangetic river and koshi is something uh, which is highly flooded river see in most of the years this uh, river encounters the flood and that is the reason why uh, we uh, would like to transfer this excess flood water to the 
uh, water deficit basin and that is what we have selected the major link and this major link is a tributary of Mahananda river. So there are two river basins Ganga and Mahananda and in these two basins we are having two sub basins you can say two major tributary one is Kosi where we have access water another you have uh, Mechi which is basically a tributary of Mahananda and that is the deficient in the water so we would like to transfer from this Kosi to the Mechi and that is what uh, the problem here has been posed. So this model basically consists of nonlinear convex quadratic optimization model uh, for um, determining the optimal amount of water to be transferred from one basin to the other basin. The objective function we have trying to minimize the mismatch between demand and supply requirements. We are going to consider the constraints of the demand. So demand will include the agricultural demand, industrial water demand, you know, the municipal water demand and environmental flows water demand. Then we have the canal conveyance constraint. The link is going to have its own capacity. So that uh, the carrying capacity is going to put as a constraint here. We are going to take uh, the flood risk constraint also. The flood level in the river should not cross the, you know, the permissible limit. And there should be a storage capacity constraint because it is going to consist of the barrage and the dams we are going to construct. Um, on these rivers so those capacity of those barrages or dam should not exceed so that also should appear as a constraint so here the the objective function and the set of constraints for fulfilling these requirements uh, for the two basins that is will make a mathematical model here and that uh, is going to be a quadratic non-linear optimization model and we have solved using the uh, the lingo software uh, here and as uh, you may be knowing that the lingo basically uses uh, the nonlinear solver which implies successive linear uh, you know the uh, programming or you, you can make use of even general generalized reduced gradient method for obtaining optimal solution. So the optimization model finally looks like this. So you have this is the objective function we are trying to minimize this uh, the deficit the demand the D is basically demand and T is basically the transfer and I is indicating here month. So if you want to do, uh, you know, the you're taking a planning horizon of one year, so you can sum up all monthly uh, deficits and that is we have to minimize. <coughs> and then uh, if you are going to carry out the monthly simulation or monthly optimal transfer, if you're trying to determine, then we are going to put the constraints. So here the first constraint, as you see it here, that your demand your, your transfer must be more than equal to the demand for every month. So this is what is basically the convenience losses we are deducting from the transfer. And then uh, this is the, the constraint uh, which uh, fulfills your the flood risk because this is the transfer, then the convenience losses, then how much you have the irrigation requirement for the, uh, the, the canal command. And then if there is a new area which has to be irrigated, so how much you have the irrigation and then what is going to the flow or to the river. So that means we have to first of all fulfill the irrigation demand of this first command. So only excess water has to be transferred. And then uh, whatever the losses takes place. So this is the amount of the water which is going to be received by the another deficient river. But the when the water is transferred, it should also not cross, you know, the HFL, the highest flood level of that river. Otherwise it will create, cause a flooding problem there. So that is where we are putting a constraint to reduce the flood risk. And this is what the constraint puts uh, the, uh, you know, the, the transfer must be less than or equal to, you know, the canal carrying capacity. And it also must be less than or equal to whatever the storage capacity you have for the receiving uh, reservoir system of the river. So if you're creating a barrage, that river must, the recipient river must have this much storage. So it, it cannot, if you are increasing this if the ti becomes greater than this that means it will create a flooding situation here so that is what it tries to uh, reduce the flood maintains the all uh, the environmental flows meets all demand and that is what uh, finally the optimization model looks like this one and this is short of for a, a different years on a monthly basis so these are what notations i have already said about and, and you know the application has been shown here. You can see this is the Kosi Mekchi link here. This is another canal going on. So this is the Kosi river in this. 
and 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 this is connecting to this Mechi River here, and is going to fulfill the 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 you know the demand in the Bihar. So this is the state a Bihar state where this river is coming. So this is the downstream of this where the canal command will fulfill the irrigation demand. So that is what is here. The link connects basically Kosi River, which is one of the major tributaries of Ganga River, and Mechi River, which is one of the major tributary of the Mahananda River. So link is proposed to divert Kosi River flows for irrigating the unirrigated areas of Nepal and Bihar, besides transferring part of it to the Mahananda for ultimate transfer to Ganga. The Kosi River is proposed to be stored in the proposed Kosi High Dam at uh, Baraj Chaitra in Nepal. So that is what I said that it must be the the water must be below the uh, the capacity of the dam so that it should not create a flood uh, hazard or flood risk. The regulated releases from reservoir after power generation. So we have a power generation at the high dam will be and that will be basically concentrated. Uh, fall type of the power plant. So at the toe of the dam itself, uh, the the turbine will be there and it will generate the power. So after generating the power, the excess water is what is diverted from the proposed the Chatra barrage for irrigation and diversion in Kosi Mechir Link Canal on the left. So on the left of this, you see here. So this is the link where the amount of the water is going to be transferred from this high dam, and uh, you know. To the Mechi link, where we will have the barrage to have a temporary storage of this water. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, this is a typical example I am trying to show you that one has to take also the environmental flow constraint. Otherwise, what happens if you are transferring a high amount of the water from one river, that river itself becomes a water deficient and then it will have a poor ecosystem here. So this is just one typical example I am showing you that you may have, you see this is a very clean water at the origin of one of the example I am showing for the Yamuna river and then you see when it enters into Delhi stretch this becomes so dirty because this is not able to maintain the minimum flow in the river. So it doesn't help to support even the ecosystem or eco services and if you look at the scientifically <coughs> On the river water quality, then you see that this is the variation of the BOD. A high BOD you can observe in the whole stretch of 10 kilometer. You see the around 40 milligram per liter of BOD, very high. And if you look at the DO level, just in the beginning, it is more than uh, you know the six milligram per liter, and it is very close to zero. So that means you can think of how bad quality we have for this. So if you have to sustain the minimum, you know the the flow, so that you have the self aeration capacity of the rivers, you are able to maintain the DO more than 5 or 6 milligram per liter and that should be the aim. So the minimum flow has to be maintained and that is what I had put in the, uh, you know, the, in the constraint itself. So now look at here. So this is what we see the the optimal water transfer optimal water transfer here for 2024 this is for 2025 and you can see the most of the maximum water flow is occurring in this October month we have minimum here in the November month so for on monthly basis we have projected also the uh, what is going to be the demand and how much water transfer we should do in different years. So we have obtained for the baseline condition, uh, you know, and then uh, we have gone for the, uh, you, uh, for different years like 2023, 24 and 25. So this is the way how you can transfer uh, the optimal water. And then in the, <coughs> in the last, I would like to conclude that this study reveals that the water demand of the recipient basin is fully satisfied with the optimal water transfer through the interconnected rivers link. The optimal transfer varies here in each month. The highest we observe water transfer of 1,531.87 million cubic meter is required in the month of October, whereas the lowest optimal water transfer we see around 140 uh, MCM. The optimal solutions have been also obtained for the projected demands of uh, the baseline and also for the various years like 2023, 24 and 25 
and we see that water transfer through the link can satisfy the demand successfully through this link. So optimization model and results presented in this paper would be useful in efficiently managing water resources as well as reducing the water related problems and food security and economic growth of this. So with this, I would like to thank all of you for patience sharing. If you have any question, I'll be happy to answer. You can always contact me through email and then uh, I'll be happy I'll be happy to reply you whatever the queries you have. Thank you very much. Thank you.